Senator Greg, is there any is there any consensus on this issue? I don't know. Uh, a matter of equity, I guess. <clears throat> You've got to look at the people who paid their debt back, and suddenly they're seeing people whose debts forgiven, and they're asking themselves, "Well, who's going to pay that back? I guess I'll have to pay that back too." because it's still an obligation of the taxpayer. Uh, you've got $1.6 trillion of student loans. It's not $32 billion. $1.6 trillion of student loans. As you mentioned, 40 million people involved in that. And I don't know of a better investment that you can make as a person, especially a young person, than to go to college. Your return on investment is usually extremely significant, especially if you learn a skill that is very saleable. So it seems to me that uh, to su suddenly start forgiving debt across the board, the proposal for a $10,000 debt reduction for every, everybody who is under a certain income level, $150,000 of income, uh, which would be most of the people who get the debt, by the way, uh, is pretty outrageous. I mean, it's a tremendous cost to the American taxpayer to pay for people who've really gotten a pretty good deal by going to college uh, and got much better earning capacity. And also, one other thing here, Andrew, that's important to remember. College tuition has escalated faster than any other item in our economy besides hospital care. 160% increase. And that's a function of these massive loan programs and that allows colleges not to be accountable. They simply take the money and then they spend it and they don't have any accountability. So I think you got to put some accountability on the college side to keep the cost down. Uh, and I, I actually have no problem with Heidi's idea that the people who were scammed, uh, they should get some some relief. But for right. most Americans who went to college uh, and got a great degree and are going to make a lot of money, it's hard to say that the person on Main Street should pay, participate in paying for their costs. Senator Heidkamp, is, is, is there a way to do it in a fair way? I mean, he's right. Look, there's a lot of people who've already paid out. They, they've they've yeah. paid. And is there a way to either means test it or focus just on those who've had an unfair experience. And then, of course, there's going to be a debate about what an unfair experience is. Well, first off, think about this. Think about our veterans who couldn't afford college, who were promised that they would get college tuition paid. And now they hear they didn't really need to go serve. Or people who are student, uh, who are teachers who, you know, did this because their student debt would be forgiven. So there's a lot of equity issues. Parents who sacrifice vacations to save for college education now feel like a, a total wipeout of student debt is not an, a, a fair thing to have happen. But I think that if you look at the interest rates prior to a couple years ago, when Angus King led the effort to reform student uh, uh, interest rates, interest rates were way too high given what the Fed was paying. I think if you look at adjusting interest rates, apply that adjustment to principal backwards, people should pay their student debt. I agree with the governor, but right. we shouldn't be preying on those same students by charging six, seven percent when the Fed's borrowing at one or less than one. So there is a way to do this that is equal, which is to equalize that interest rate, apply it retroactively. Right. I think this is an idea that I've advanced for many years. I think it's a way to explain to people how to equalize student debt, but do it in a fair way. Right. Hey, Joe, well, you know. What? Heidi, I think that's, Jen, that may be true, but go ahead. you got to remember what's going on here with the $10,000 elimination of debt for everybody under $150,000. Under $150, it's, it's crass political politics. It's an attempt to buy votes. It's that simple. Uh, there's, no, there's no reason to do that for most people. They can pay it back. And for those people who can't pay it back, you can do a workout schedule that helps them get through that. Uh, but basically what you have here is a political agenda. And the political agenda is well, driving policy. Let me, but let me ask policy. you this. Why are we not having a debate in this country? You're putting this aside. Why are we not having a debate in this country about how to tamp down the costs of education? We I mean, nobody talks should. about that. And by the way, Judd, That's what I interestingly, earlier. no, I know. But but the but the interesting component is we're willing to have that conversation or people say they'll have that conversation. But we don't. We talk about it in the context of health care all the time. And sometimes, Judd, you and I have had debates about, and you've pushed back on, on some of the, some of the price controls and other things that the government should do. So how should we look at education, health care, and trying to bring these costs down? You've got to put, a, you know, you, Andrew, you've got to put a accountability in the way you put it in. It's not by having a direct student loan program where basically there's no, there's no concern about what happens to the money. We used to have a program right. which was managed by you. the banking system. And that I, made I, sense I, because then you had overwrite, you had underwriting standards that made sense. But you got to put pressure on the school systems. Not to, every time we raise the Pell Grant or raise a student loan grant, 
tuitions go up. It's absurd. And, and when yeah. I was chairman of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee, we tried to address that, never able to get to, do, get to it because of resistance from the educational community. But there should be some sort of base where when you, when you increase these programs, colleges can't use that increase to, to jump their tuitions. 